Well, now we're in Mount Dora, and for once, I'm not doing the show. I'm actually just here to have fun and shop, introducing us to Treasure Marts, which is a shop in a strip on the old highway. I didn't know this was even here, so let's go find out what it's like. Well, my camera shy friend is introducing me to this place now, and then I'm coming back later with YouTubers, so you'll see them in this video, too. You can see the wintry snow scene because we're in Florida and it's 80 degrees. It looks like a mall full of all sorts of decor and hard goods, and I see antiques things and vintage things and some newer things and we're gonna take a look around. I used to see this piece a lot out west. I haven't seen it so much in this part of the country but this is McCoy, early 50s. You see the steer horn there and the whip. These jugs, I always get a big kick out of these. These are mostly newer but they're all based on old folk art and they sell for a lot of money. I mean you have to really like that face staring at you but uh, I mean $99 it seems like that's the price on all of these. These are interesting. An artist I'm not familiar with, Franklin S. Galambos, and they are a series of silhouette-style serographs. Absolutely late 1970s look in terms of the design and the color, and the prices are about $180 to $250 each. Here's our signature on that, 1973. This is a poppet by Metlocks. This was a stoneware figure they did in the late 1970s, a whole series of these actually, and then they were knocked off by various Japanese makers. They definitely have a collector following, and I don't see a price on this one, so I'm going to see if I can find out. Obviously reupholstered, although the upholstery is good, but this is a nice Victorian settee set. They are asking $300 for both pieces these days. That's all they seem to go for. It's got nice East Lake spoon carved details. This is going to date to sometime in the 1880s or 90s originally. What's nice about this one is the upholstery is mainly more prominent than the back splat, so you're not going to lean against that and have it be uncomfortable. Some of these are more for design than for sitting, but these look like they would actually be useful. G.I. Joe headquarters. This is priced at $180. They seem like they're all priced about that when I see them for sale in antique malls now. Next to it is the Mobile Command Center, but I think it's missing a few things. Okay, spot the oldest thing on the shelf. And I'm actually kind of zeroed in on it. The oldest thing on the shelf is going to be this piece of blue glass here. It's a late Victorian piece, it appears. Nice color. Ah, uh, Westmoreland, yes. I don't know the pattern. It's some sort of a fern pattern. And let's see how much the oldest piece on the shelf is. $25. Oh, I like those with the flowers. Yeah, they tend to. They're usually real loose panels like that, and the flowers are heavy, so I think they kind of pull at the seams. But if you can find them in good condition, it's a neat look. Well, cow milking stand in the foreground here is $38, and this would be something you could hang on the wall, I suppose, if you want real farmhouse decor. And then there's an old handmade pet cage behind it. This is very similar to Blue Ridge Pottery. It has a similar origin as well. It is from Irwin, Tennessee. Clinchfield Artware Pottery. The Cash family ran this outfit. And this particular piece is going to have their mark on the bottom. As opposed to the Blue Ridge mark, but it's a very similar type of wear, all hand painted. All of these enterprises in Irwin were to help Appalachian women, who were the primary decorators, to have a place that they could work with skills they already had, like toll painting and hand painting. The Cash family actually started when Blue Ridge closed, and they were able to buy a bunch of the castings and some of their molds. And that's why there are very similar lines and patterns, because some of them were done on the same blank. This particular picture is priced at $40. Okay, someone has taken an old, old oak table and put a newer owl design on it, and it's actually artfully done, and it's only $30. This is Victorian enameled glass, and it has some beading, similar to Moriyagi beading on porcelain from Japan, but this was done in glass in the U.S. and Britain, as well as Bohemia and other places. You can see it's hand-blown. And this set with the four tumblers is only $55. It's approximately 150 years old. Well, this is sea green. I have it in rosé. It looks like it has a lot of staining in it, so we're going to see if that'll clean up or not. 
It's a good piece, but you're right about the water stain. It does seem like I was hoping it was all dust, but I think you're right. You gonna skip it? Uh, if I thought I could clean it, it's a great deal. It's Blanco, yeah. and it's only four bucks. But oh. yeah, I know that makes it that makes it really tempting to try. But look at all the staining in there, and I think I'm too lazy. These were very popular a few years ago to make lights and things from. I don't know if that's still happening. You can see this one's later in time because it's got a plastic spinner, but these would have been ventilations on top of barns and chicken coops and that sort of thing. This is a very pretty Costa Boda piece. It was a presentation piece to the University of Florida and has a Pepsi logo on it. So for a lot of glass collectors, that might be a negative, but if you have an interest in the University of Florida, it might be the perfect modernist piece for you. It's got the Costa Boda signature on the bottom and is priced at 150. This is pottery craft. This is the poppy pattern that they made in the late 70s. This is the beginning of their dinnerware that pretty soon took over the California market as all the other California companies left the market. It came in a more peachy colored background as well. And this casserole is $24.99. Okay, we're sticking to the plan because we don't want to get lost and we're turning right every time we have a chance. So, some Pyrex Cinderella. Oh, you like the, the French market? That's my own. I've always liked this pattern. And I am seeing people starting to collect it, although, oh boy, they're, they're up there on these. But they do have the original plastic lids, which are usually fried by now. But they are asking $51 a piece. 154 for the set here with the sunflower. It's a great pattern. If you did not have running water in your house, you would have to make a baby bath out of something like this. This one is enamel, probably 1920s vintage, looking at the base, and it's priced at 185. Now people use them for planters, they use them as ice buckets for parties, all sorts of different things. Cute 1940s or 50s bow tie pin in there. A green heart, just in time for Valentine's. Some copper, looks like probably Renoir cufflinks there. Might be interested in taking a look at some of those. This is trash-tastic. I love it. I buy these when I see them, if they're cheap enough and in good shape. This one has a couple of eye problems, but this is the classic chalkware owl lamp from the 1970s. They're asking $70 for that. 1950s toy chest, $28.99. It's the circus. This was a pearl wick product, it says, made in New York. Back in the day, it's just a little damaged in the front, but that's awfully cute for a kid's room. Lots of good colors to pick up on there. Be fun for an old toy display. And that's in a space that otherwise has a lot of useful household things. So this is why places like this are fun, because you never know what you'll find. You might find something you need at home while you're also shopping for your reseller items. If you're in the area of Lake County, Florida, well, you can be part of a radio show where collectors and vendors unite. There are some of these radio shows in various cities here in Florida. I haven't seen this phenomenon elsewhere. I think it seems like a lot of fun. On the voice of Lake County, hand-painted Italian cake set in the square shapes here. Freeform painting of flowers. Again, similar to cash pottery in Blue Ridge in this country, but these were done at a later time because in Italy they could afford the labor to keep doing hand painted china well into the 1970s and 80s. A Lou, Lou Hodges table, and I like the shoes, the shoes I would wear. The table, $195. That seems to be the new price on these. For a long time, people weren't interested in oak furniture in modern styles, but now they are. Lots of glass companies sold their wares to other companies to decorate. This is a Heise Lariat. You can see the Lariat twist there. But then they've had another company do the silver overlay on top of it. That makes them a little more unusual. $75 on that set. Nice candy scale. It's interesting. Almost every space in here has something interesting that's older vintage or antique in it, along with other things. This one is the exact weight scale company out of Columbus, Ohio from probably the 1920s, so it is getting to true antiquedom around 100 years old. Someone must not have been doing well enough at 15% off because now suddenly everything is 50% off in this space. And while I don't see a lot of old things, I'm willing to take a moment to look at that price. The piece to buy is probably the Dalmatian statue. I think this is a Lefton piece looking at that mark. It's thin and light like Japanese ceramics of the late 60s, and it says Dalmatian on it in case you didn't know. But Dalmatians are a popular breed and a distinct breed. And when I buy figures, I find that purebred figures do sell better. 
Well, I found one thing in that 50% off site, and this one's 50% off also. Mostly newer things than I do. They do have this silhouette bowl. The silhouette pattern is typically associated with Hall China, but this is yellowware, so I believe that this was made by a different company. And there it is, Crooksville Pottery, also in Ohio. So it's a little different silhouette than the Hall China, but they would go together. And at half price, that's going to be $8.50, which I have to say is a, actually a really good deal. So I probably should take that too. The half off Afghan. I'll take it in and we'll see how big this one is. They're a decent sized throw. Good colors, brown tone, very 70s. Yeah, I have to admit, I think for $11, sure. These two lovely lady lamps are boudoir lamps from 1930s Germany. And they're very sweet. She's clutching her pearls. Bavaria's the mark on the bottom, so it's possible they're right after the Second World War as well. A lot of things were marked Bavaria to get Americans to buy them because there was resentment over the war. They are priced at 60 for the pair. And these are Christmas plates, Navidad, you see, so they are Spanish. They're asking 40 for the three of these, and this is a company called Santa Clara. I always thought these designs were particularly nice. There's the three wise men. Well, it really helps to shop with a buddy because she just pointed out that this poor Dalmatian, well, he's had leg surgery and he's fine now, but not fine enough to buy. Sorry, dog. They're priced as a set, they're Royal Copley. They're asking a hundred for the five pieces. Great chartreuse leaf design. Down here is an interesting piece, but I think this is newer because you can see the plastic washers in it. Here's where we get into arguments about what is vintage. So this is from the millennium, 2000 AD. And you think, well, that's less than 30 years ago. But then you see that it is by Royal Worcester. You can't really tell because they put the sticker over the mark, but you can see the mark through the sticker. And Royal Worcester is no longer in business. They had been in business over 200 years when this piece was made, and now they're gone. So does that mean it's legitimate as a collectible? They're not making anymore. So to my mind, once it's out of production and we know it's not coming back, well then it falls into the beginnings of vintageness. They've got some neat Pigeon Forge pieces over here. I always like the dogwood. Various colors for the interior, but the outsides always look the same. Only 977 on that one. This one has a chip. And then the teapot has the mark on the bottom, but the teapot's, teapot is rather plain at 1977. You had the big Lionel train when you were a kid. You might have the Lionel City Station, which is the big important building. This one's priced at 125. This will date to some time in this metal to the late 1940s. So I opened this up thinking, oh, it's going to be Vera, or maybe if we're lucky, Scaparelli, but it is actually Burger King. So apparently if you worked at Burger King at a certain point, you got this rather groovy, cool looking scarf and it's $4.50. Now I know some people collect old fast food uniforms, so we actually probably should check that out, especially because it's just been pointed out to me that it's 75% off. If you're enjoying this shopping trip as much as I am, please hit thumbs up and let us know because that lets YouTube know that you like this kind of content and it helps us spread the word and grow this community of people who are like-minded collectors. Thank you very much for all your support. It looks like treasure craft at first and then you notice the swirl in the glaze doesn't really go all the way to the bottom and it's a very uniform brown and just says USA and that means it's American Bis Sequoia wear. They copied Treasure Craft in the late 60s because that was such a popular thing. This space actually has a lot of interesting, cute little mid-century furniture. Ooh, and enamelware, and I know you like enamel. That's pretty. I also like this uh, table set. It looks like a Milo Bauman style, although I think it might actually be a look-alike. One of those shelves will flip out. I've had this before, and it actually opens up into three round shelves that go in a circle. The chairs are 1970s. This is a solder design. And they have a pair of those. They look like interlocking puzzle pieces. And a lamp to match. And I know it's a shin grabber because it's a low table, but I do like that it's on wheels and that it's black. 
Some cool stuff. I actually like this space a lot. Yeah, they have a lot of things that I think are fun. George Briard did this particular ice bucket in the fruit pattern, or had it done for him. George Briard was a designer. He didn't actually make anything, but he kept a lot of other companies in business. Then by the 80s, we are seeing more interest in ice buckets these days, and this would have been the King Tut style design. And this one is also signed George Briard on the bottom. And prices on his ice buckets, they've definitely gone up. People are more interested in this as part of barware collecting. 65 on the Egyptian, 35 on the fruit line. A lot of this very blocky low furniture with the smoke glass. These are by Lane. This is early 70s Lane furniture. This is the sort of chair I grew up with in the 70s because when we were moving around, my parents would always buy this Danish modern furniture because it was just used furniture at the time and they were so comfortable. I wish we had kept one of them now. This one's been reupholstered at some point and oh yes, they are definitely not inexpensive on that now. They've really gone up in value. And then these brutalist pieces, these are Lane also. I've had some pieces in this particular style and this pair of night tables is priced at 900 and they show where there was a sale online for 1750. I'm going to play Xeno's Guess the Price game on the Lucite lamp here. I've always liked these two with the various balls. I'm going to say in this space because they seem to know they're mid-century uh, 225. $45. Wow. That's a big surprise. Now Does that, that make it a deal? Well, it almost does. And now I start looking and saying, why is it $45? Oh, and I see a little bit of damage there. That wouldn't necessarily bother me. I also think it's been rewired. Uh -huh. I don't think that's an original cord. However, if you wanted to look for $45, that would be a great price. Nice little Haywood Wakefield. Mm -hmm. This would have been for table side. So you have your dish storage below and your utensils and serving pieces here although people sometimes will use these for bedrooms and living rooms as well and this one's priced at 625 which is a fair price for what it is this is half off as well this is a mike george carved piece this is northwest ethnography i believe mike george is tling it i think i think he's from british columbia this one is called bear which is what it is 1989 and with the discount this would be 4250 there was started to be a lot of collecting of this sort of thing in the 1970s and 80s, and we are seeing it in the States now. And some of the artists have really escalated in value, so it's worth taking a look at these pieces when you see them. A shelf full of Hummels. The larger ones do sell for bigger prices still. Some of the more complicated figures like this, I see prices as low as $55 and as much as $250, depending on the piece. It's the kind of thing... Oh my god, it's $130. Oh. Yeah. But I have one that was my mother's that um, it's all it's black, it's sleeveless, but it's all silk and um, spangly. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it's really fun. And it's interesting to me to see younger generations adopting the style. Don't believe everything that you read. Just because it says vintage doesn't mean it's vintage. Just because it has crackling in the glaze does not mean it has vintage because they can do that deliberately. And when you turn it over, do not use for food made in China. I'm not really sure what you're supposed to use it for if you're not serving food in it. If you look really closely on some of these new deliberate crackle pieces, you will see repeating patterns in the crackling. So that's definitely something to look for that will tell you it's a new piece. It's funny to think that Florida has had hockey long enough for this to be vintage, but it is true. And yes, 30 years ago when the Florida Panthers started, they were the most successful first year NHL team. That record has been eclipsed since by the Las Vegas team. When it says number 101, wonderful 54 models, anytime it says models, you can figure those are probably scarcely or unclad women or sometimes men. This one was done in 1969, so probably women, made in Hong Kong. $39 for the set. That's about what the large ones go for now. Some seem more vintage than others, but half off definitely makes it worth looking. I know this one. I would think would have some age, but no, maybe not. Nope, not prong set. Interesting. It has the look of old, but when you look at the way it's made and the shininess, it's not. Several pieces of Fenton blue hobnail, and the prices seem pretty good. 35 for the larger fan base, 30 for the ruffled base, 14 for the miniature cornucopia, and the basket is the same price, just $8 on the little sugar bowl. So 
a very pretty color. There are certain people who really just collect the Fenton Blue because they like the opalescent edge and the contrast it brings. Pretty amazing how inexpensive some of these old console radios are now. This is the Silver Tone, would have been sold through Sears. A fairly straightforward design, but absolutely art modern. It could work into brutalism, and it's only $45. You don't get FM, but you do get a really good bass response. This is a Mexican lapis and malachite box with brass and copper figures laid in in a Los Costillos style. It's priced at $75. If it was marked Los Costillos, then I would have to have it for that price. But it just has a Mexico mark on it. A pair of cast iron bookends here. This is the Cod Fisherman. This is 1920s. In fact, it may actually say on the back. It does, 1928, so five years from being true antique. 38.88 for the pair. The colors of this trunk are really pretty. It's a dome top, which is a little less useful to people because they can't use it as a, an end table or a seat, but it's wonderful for storage. The reason they made the dome top ones in the first place was because wealthy people didn't want their stuff to be at the bottom, and if you had the dome top, they had to put it on top, so yours came off first. This is from about 1890, approximately. Priced at 125 Now we're heading back into Clearance Corner, and hey, I'll bite. Who knows what might be on Clearance? The entire setup for a Home Depot tool bench, for example. Before Ethan Allen and everybody else decided to only make things that looked like knockoffs of mid-century modern, they did knockoffs of Hitchcock furniture, but they were considered very good in their time. My aunt had some of these pieces back in the 1960s and 70s. This one's priced at $129. There's a lot of detail. And Ethan Allen was not inexpensive new. It is good quality. Irish coffee became a very popular drink about 1970, and you can tell because the cover of the box that these Irish coffee mugs by Federal Glass is in, well, that's a pretty 70s looking design right there, right out of the early 70s, the avocado greens, the yellow, and that medium turquoise, definitely of the era. A lot of people like these sets now, it's a good price. This is cute, this is a tall cocktail shaker, hand-painted with a cardinal on a pine bow. Good lid, satin glass, $39. Let's see if they're having any sort of a sale Ten dollars off of fifty or more. Well, that doesn't quite qualify, but it is a nice piece for the price. This is what happens to instant collectibles when they are no longer instantly collectible. Beware, Funko Pop buyers. Well, I got a neat afghan and a Burger King scarf, and my friend got a really cool Austrian enameled piece, and our total bill for all three pieces was under fifteen dollars. So this was the kind of buy I needed today. So it was a rain out at Mount Dora today. It's Sunday of the show. The YouTubers came Friday and they said, well, since you're packing up early, why don't you come meet us at a vendor mall? We found something that looks really cool. And lo and behold, it's the place I was just introduced to two weeks ago. But you know, they get new things pretty often. So I said, sure, let's take a look and see what's different this time. Well, I like signs and I haven't really found very many lately. This is $15, but no parking, stopping, standing anytime is something that's pretty helpful for some people. And this is definitely older. It's not embossed, but it's got the uh, painting on it, and you can tell by the unevenness that it was something that somebody stenciled. So it has some age, and I think I'm going to get that. These are cute. These are Italian or Bohemian, they say. You know, I keep confusing that because actually similar styles were made in both places and I've had them with both labels. But they say Bohemian, so we're going to go with that. Maybe they originally had the bottle. It's 25% off, but they're 80 bucks and I would want the whole set for that price. Camera is one of the patterns of Waterford I really like because it's got the diamonds. And I think that's kind of a good look. Then there's this little thing that looks like a football. And I guess it's a paperweight. And wow, it's not inexpensive. I do feel like Crystal is starting to make a comeback, but maybe not to the point of having these prices on it again yet. We'll see. This is the Boyne pattern, you notice. It's also a diamond point, but a little narrower, and there's cuts that come up above the rim of the clear area. So that's the difference between those two. A subtle difference, but depending what you like, it might make a big difference to you. 
These Perrault mime figures were very popular in France in the 1920s and were big sellers then and are very collectible. And because of that, in the 1980s, we saw revival pieces by Sigma the Taste Setter, which is what these are. And Sigma the Taste Setter is a name from the 80s that I am starting to look for because they did make cute stuff and there are people collecting it. Now it's awfully lightweight compared to earlier pieces, but it is made in Japan. And I'm gonna look these up and see what the prices are currently online. It's one of the few clown patterns that people still seem to like. It's plain, it's flat, it has bubbles and imperfections, but this is actually Blanco glass. This is a pretty early piece from the 1950s. It's only $18, and I'm sure that it's worth more than double that just because of the size and the shape. You can see the rough pontal even on this side of it, which is one thing I have to say, as much as I love Blanco, I don't love seeing the rough pontal through the flat pieces, but a lot of the collectors really don't mind. It's probably something I should buy, but I'm gonna think about it while I look around. And of course, we know that means someone else will probably run right up and get it, because that is how that works, you know. This is a really pretty Murano bowl. I like the Submerso effect. It's got that nice double layering. The colors are good. It's $95. I think one of the friends that's coming probably will buy it at that price. I'm going to leave it here and see if they find it. This will be a fun experiment. I'm getting a little bit of a jump start on this place. So uh, not sure that I necessarily have the audience to sell it for $195, but if they don't take it, well, I might. If this is a true old La Polina cigar jar, I would be very excited if the price is right. They have 35 on it, which is not bad. Now let's look at the bottom. It does have the right information. First District of Pennsylvania, Congress Cigar Company. It does seem to have normal wear around the edges. So I think this might actually be legit. It doesn't feel exactly greasy like new glass. Let me see if I can do a little bit of looking into this because I haven't had one before. And the nice thing is in the world we live in, you can sometimes do research on the fly. So we'll see if we can find out anything more about it to confirm whether it's real. They're big and they take a lot of room and they're not the most fun thing to ship, but I do like these Fenton banana shaped dishes. $29 on the hobnail, but only 24 on the silver crust. That's actually a pretty good deal. I could sell that for $50 in a mall space. It's not something you're going to make money selling online. And that's one reason that some folks, if they have a lot of extra merchandise, may want to consider selling in a real world location, either shows or antique mall spaces or that sort of thing. That's the reason these things come here is because you don't have to ship, but there's still definitely a customer for this. Now that brass is really popular, I think it's worth showing these pieces, mainly for the mark on the back. This is by Virginia Metal Crafters. There's the VM mark on the right side. They did a lot of things for Colonial Williamsburg and other things that are reproductions of older pieces, as well as their own original designs. And they started doing them, I believe, in the 1950s, and you see pieces all the way through the 1970s. This clip is $14.88. Cute little painted box here. Yeah. Maybe Charlton decoration, I have a feeling, because this is a Westmoreland piece, as they say. Only $9.88. Just for any dresser jar with painting these days, that seems like a pretty inexpensive price. So again, I have a car full of stuff because I'm coming from a show. I'm going to hold off on that one and see if somebody else grabs it. And if they don't, then I'll come back and get it. On the other hand, because it's a vendor mall, some people have very elevated opinions of the merchandise. And this one is $64.88. Now, Fenton Lily of the Valley sells. It's a cute pattern. Nice color, late 70s. But compare that to paying $95 for this piece. And as a dealer, you have to start thinking, well, where is the real value? I got to meet Pickled Tink, who is one of my supporters and viewers here, and it was really fun. I saw her at the show at Mount Dora. We ran into each other when I was shopping in one of the booths during the rain, and she loves pink depression glass, as do I. And she and I both agree that at these prices, people are gonna start picking this stuff up. Only $20 minus 25%, that's $15 for the pink poinsettia. If you look on eBay, these do sell for considerably more than that. 
I know everyone's hot about the green right now because of the uranium glass, but pink is a color that we are seeing come back into decorating. This is Mayfair pattern with the drop bowl, nice big substantial piece. And with the discount, it's $18. These prices are so low compared to what they were even 30 years ago when this was the most popular category of collecting in America other than coins and stamps that I just believe we're gonna see new collectors getting into this very soon, if they're not already. Pretty piece of Latticino. This is marked for Toso. It is a bright, bright, bright yellow. Is this a yellow that fluoresces? I have to say, I don't know. I've never tried fluorescing that, so we're gonna take out our little miniature black light and see. My suspicions are no. Let's see if I'm wrong. Nope, I am correct. A lot of times the really, really, really bright yellow is done with different chemicals. Cute little 1940s box here. I'm trying to think if this was for silver or something. It does have a nice little Bakelite handle. $22, and I hear things rattling around in there. Sometimes dealers forget to take things out or they're using things as display and the lid gets shut. So that's why it's fun to open things up. And here we go. We've got, oh, re-elect the president. That was President Nixon. Committee to re-elect the president, or creep, was the committee that decided to break into the Watergate Hotel, and that started all of that mess. There's a couple of St. Christopher medals, it looks like. And this is some sort of an old pin. Might be fraternal. Yes, BOA. That is a fraternal organization. They are correct. Someone was just telling me about this, and I'd never seen one before, and here's one in person. It's so funny how you learn something and then immediately you're faced with it. It's the great thing about continuing to learn in this business. These are Avon makeup demonstrators, and this is what the Avon lady would bring so that they could show all the different shades and how they might mix and match and be applied. And it looks like there's several of them. They're priced between $15 and $20, and from what the person who was telling me about them at the show said, that's actually a pretty good price on these. Old makeup will sell if it's not opened and in good condition, doesn't smell bad and hasn't broken down. So check it out. So we'll see these things at estate sales from time to time and they're usually priced at nothing. This is an old syrup container with a flat panel from about 1900. It's got the original lid, the lid's in good shape. Everything's great about it. They put it as amethyst. The thing they don't know is that, yes, the manganese in the glass will turn it a lavender color, but if it's this deep purple, it means it's been irradiated. Because this is what depression glass made to look like amethyst is. Pattern glass made to look amethyst was that color too, but notice this is a little lighter, but it's really, really dark. The sun alone will not cause this color. So I avoid those. These are post-war Capo de Monte urns. These look like they may have hung or could have been made to hang. And they've got the Capo de Monte mark. They are legit. But the post-war stuff is really vague on detail. This one doesn't even have a face. And that's the reason that when you're looking at post-war Capo de Monte, you really want to look for better quality. Because the ones that are this indefinite just are not popular with collectors now. Old seltzer bottles are collectible, especially if they are in color, even more so if they have an embossed label. But this has a cool label from Ansonia, Connecticut. It has a zip code, so we see we know this one's later because it has to be after December of 1963 to have a zip code. But if it was old and had the embossing on it, those sell for real money. This one's priced at 79 Next to it is a cute 1950s Sierra Vista cookie jar. Look at that face. <laughs> Very fun and whimsical. Sierra Vista was one of the better cookie jar makers out of California in the 50s and 60s. This month is three years. Yeah. And it's priced at $50, which is about what these things go for now. At their peak, they might have gone as high as 85 to 100. Ma'am Johnson, La Hora de Olvido. It'll be interesting. I'm planning on going to Mexico soon, and I am curious to see whether they buy things that are printed in Spanish, because we find them here in the States, but we don't have a lot of customers for them yet. Doctor and patient lobby card. I just got to watch How to Marry a Millionaire with friends of mine last night. 
very fun movie. Great props too. This pooch has a Hevener mark and Hevener has been around since the 1970s. This one has a broken leg, unfortunately. Yep, looks like a We've got the bloodhound down here, only $15. Nicely done, pretty realistic looking. Oh, and I said I was with friends and I didn't actually introduce who they are, so I should show you. There's one right now. What'd you find? Oh, I found the candy dish, Ooh, but Viking. Jocelyn got the, the deal of the day. Oh, I love that piece. My gosh, that's a great piece for the price. I have that in a larger size and it's one of my favorite things I own. I'm so excited to put it on my sunport. In, uh, oh, you're going to keep it? Oh, oh cool. Course. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, my gosh. You and I have something in. Oh, yay. We have something that we both have. I just <laughs> love have that. Three of them. Do you really? <laughs> Different sizes, yeah. You know, there's a picture in there uh, of their old factory, and they had one that was like human size, like really? six feet tall. And I wonder what happened to that. It just kills me every time Maybe I see it. I'm like, somebody's got it. it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Someone took it. Around, so. I hope. <laughs> Look at this brass mortar and pestle for $19.99. That's not a bad price. These sell very well if they're heavy and substantial with the turning and they always did and even more now that brass is becoming a big thing for a lot of people and they're practical especially if you like to grind herbs or have a reason to do poultices or, or medicines or things this looks like a neat old tin i don't know how old it really is though it feels kind of light a lot of these replica tins were made in the early 70s by chain the company that made the tin toys and this case company and a few other places they are much lighter in weight than the originals Easter is coming, and this is the Wedgwood version of the Peter Rabbit and the Beswick stories. Peter Rabbit and Benjamin Bunny. I know someone who had these for her kid 30 years ago, and they were made in that time, and they are starting to be collectible because a lot of those kids are now adults, and these have gone by the wayside so they're trying to get them back 750 is a pretty good price on it one of the reasons to do this is because it's fun to get out of your regular world this crazy tricky jar vaguely is colored like a louisville stoneware but it's definitely not their design and it's also chipped because it's very lightweight and that tells me it's italian and there is the mark Cute, but $33 for me, I don't think that's a buy. These are cool and they have been marked as vintage leather boho bottles. These are actually made in Yugoslavia back around 1970. For some reason, I ended up in an estate where the fellow had worked for Boeing and they had some business in Yugoslavia back then. And that's the reason that I recognize this as being from there. They have two of them at $9 a piece. They're just interesting enough. I think I'll pick one of these up at that price. It's all leather and a lot of handwork and very folksy looking, and it's still barware at the same time. That's a very good clue. You're right. Yeah, Galley would round their edges. The other thing is they never made their signatures big and conspicuous <laughs> in the middle of the vase like this. They were usually in a corner or they'd be very small. Um, and the reason that they made them big and conspicuous is they're like, look, it's Galay with the reproductions. Plus, also, if you saw a real Galay, it's just it's just softer and more subtle. It's just not. I mean, this one, you're right, is really obvious. Here's some more Capo de Monte of the mid-century era. Now, these pieces are quite fancy and involved with big flowers. It's hard to find these without some chips or cracks or damage, and these look like they're all in pretty good shape. It's a very specific style, but if you like it, there were all sorts of pieces, little pieces of furniture, jardiners and pedestals, so there is a lot to choose from. Speaking of jardiners and pedestals, this is a beautiful French jardiner and pedestal with the Art Nouveau. It's a shame that it has been so terribly damaged, that's why it's only $200. It could be restored, even as broken as it is. Somebody glued it back together. Hopefully they did not use super glue, because then you would not be able to get that apart. If they used white glue, it'll all dry together, and then you can take it apart again if you make a mistake. A professional ceramic restorer could probably turn that into a four or $500 piece with some work. We were just talking about how Port Marion is selling, and here's a whole bunch of it here. I look for the stuff that marked Made in England. I don't do the Chinese stuff, but it sells really well. It's very popular here in Florida. And, you know, it's got a nice design, a traditional-looking design. 
but the rim is transfer wear. It's not gold. And so you don't have to worry about microwaving and dishwashing. And so people love the look and they can use it in a practical way. I have the bigger version of this as a TV lamp. I think it's really cute. The light comes through all of the stuff, but maybe because it's Cinderella in her carriage, it's not really Cinderella, it's just the woman in the carriage with the driver. Maybe it's just too traditional for the TV lamp collectors. I have not actually been able to sell mine, so I'm not going to buy this one until I find a buyer for mine. And once I know the market better, then we'll see if we buy more. I like the birds. You know, I'm always a sucker for these flower frogs from Czechoslovakia from the 30s. This one's 1555. There's a little room at that, not enough for resale, but I like it. This one is the same price. This one is more likely to be an American maker. And this one I like because it's got the tail up and the head down, which is a different position. If it was just a little cheaper, you'd see this one's Germany. So they were made in various places. You'll also see Japanese, all 1930s era. If this was just a little less, I'd probably buy that one. I think it's the best of the three for the detail. Although this one's a more fun bird being a parrot. The Miami Dolphins mirror dates from about the time that they went undefeated and won the Super Bowl in 1973 with a backup quarterback leading them for most of the season. I would get it because I'm in Florida, but it's got a big old scratch across it. This booth is 35% off, and I know a lot of people shy away from pattern matching these days, but there is still an active market for certain patterns. This is a continental kilns pattern with the sculptured flowers, and it's one of the patterns of theirs that actually sells fairly well. Continental Kilns was not as big and quote-unquote important as a lot of other makers, but they did some nice shapes. A lot of staining under the glaze on the ball pitcher, so that one would be a miss, but $24 less 35%. I think that you would find that there would be a customer for this, especially with teapots becoming more popular again. I really like this motto in the back. It's called living. The miser thinks he's living when he's hoarding up his gold. The soldier calls it living when he's doing something bold. Oh, the thing that we call living isn't gold or fame at all. It's fellowship and sunshine and it's roses by the wall. Evenings glad with music and a hearth fire that's ablaze and the joys which come to mortals in a thousand different ways. It's laughter and contentment and a struggle for a goal. It's everything that's needful in the shaping of a soul. A lot of popular mottos from the 1920s and they are fun to collect and you can do a whole wall of them and people talk about affirmations well that's pretty affirming my friend rob found an interesting piece here this is a sean connor sculpture and i don't really know this artist but you said it's got a good signature really interesting actually do you mind showing the back sure that is really interesting and a contemporary artist that we'll have to start looking for because I think that's really intriguing and that's like seems like a great price. And this is a very pretty tray here with the guilloche and that is priced at 95 less 35 percent which is around 65 dollars I think for what it is that's a good price. All right lead the way. Well we have a bunch of stuff piled up here don't we? Hmm. We do. Well, I got a bunch of new things that weren't here two weeks ago. It was fun to see everybody and worth coming back. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.